shirts, shirts, shirts. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Ask Oki. And today we're going to continue our second installment on our series on shirts. We're going to start from shirt design and use. How do you actually design a shirt? Now, this is a very critical subject. Why? Because shirts are an undergarment and they are hidden. And so many don't pay a lot of heed to how the shirts are designed or how they appear. But the shirt is critical in framing the face. And I'll explain why. Let's talk about design. What are the things to focus on when designing a shirt? The color is the most critical and important feature. Why? Again, because it frames the face. Other parts of the shirt, as you can see, are fairly hidden away, except a smidgen of the cuff, about a quarter of the cuff, which should peek right under your coat sleeve. However, the rest of the shirt is hidden under the overgarment, which is usually a jacket or a coat of some sort. So let's talk about color design. We're going to take two examples, a gentleman with a slim face and one with shall we say, a broad face. I did hint in the first installment of this segment about how gentlemen or men with distinct facial features ought to take care in designing their color. If you have a slim face, the idea around design is balance. And so you want to balance out your face by using a wider spread in your color. And the spread, of course, is the color or the point color of the shirt. I'm wearing a button-down shirt, but if you're wearing a typical dress shirt, it will be the point from the point from the knot of the tie up to the edge of the color. And so if you have a broad face or if you have a slim face, you want to use what we'll call a semi-spread or a wider spread to balance out the slimness or thinness of your face. On the contrary, if you have a wider face or a broader face, you want to maintain a narrow spread, a very narrow spread, which again balances out your face. This is very, very critical. And perhaps if you were to take one lesson from this tutorial, it would be exactly that. The shape of the collar and the spread, the width of the spread. Now, let's talk about the length of the point collar. The length of the point collar, meaning the distance from the top of the collar to the point. If I were wearing a regular dress shirt with a tie, it would be the distance from the knot of the tie right down to the end of the point collar. It should be approximately equal to the width of your tie and your lapel. Now, this is not a hard and fast rule, but it's a rule of thumb that I have found to work for me. The width meaning the point, the length of your point collar should be approximately equal to the width of your tie and the width of your uh, lapel. And what that does, it, it establishes congruence, what I call harmony or balance in this triangle right here, which is the first thing people focus on when they look at you. So you want harmony and your shirt collar should be in harmony with the width of your tie and the size of your lapel. The third thing I want to mention also about collar design is this. The collar needs to be long enough to be tucked under your coat lapel. Again, I'm not wearing a dress shirt, but if you can picture a dress shirt, the length of the point collar needs to be long enough to be tucked under your coat lapel. There is nothing as unsightly as seeing what I call floating collars, and I'm sure you've all seen those floating collars where gentlemen or ladies, in fact, wear shirts where the collars are so short that they float and they're not properly tucked into the lapel. It's a very untidy look and can mar an otherwise excellent outfit. So we've talked about three things here. We've talked about the width or the, the, the type or how, you, how to choose the shape of the collar. We've talked about the length of the point collar and we talked about the width of the point collar. Well, length, width, uh, the same. These are the critical things to pay attention to when designing a shirt. All the other things, such as the shape of the 
the cough, and so on and so forth. Those are secondary because they are largely hidden under the garment. However, we shall still go through them and mention each of them from a design standpoint. We'll start with the collar, which is the other, or the sleeve, or the um, cuff, which is the other visible piece of the shirt. Now, I'm wearing a barrel cuff. A barrel cuff is a regular cuff, essentially, that has buttons on it. And the other type of cuff is what you call a surgeon cuff, or a French cuff, or double cuff which essentially folds over and you wear them with cufflinks. There is no hard and fast rule about designing cuffs. They just need to be the right size. In other words, they should be loose enough around your wrist, but not so loose that they look like you're swimming in them. So it should be about, if you stick your finger, it should be about two fingers width between your natural size of your wrist and, and that gives you sufficient room to move up and down, to move your shirt sleeve up and down. Now, if you wear a wristwatch, as I do, as, an, as many of you do, you want to ensure that your wristwatch wrist or the, your wristwatch cuff is slightly larger than the other one. Why? Well, that is rather saying the obvious because your watch takes up some space and so you want to ensure that your watch wrist comes with perhaps a quarter of an inch about a quarter or even an eighth of an inch larger than the other wrist or your non-watch wearing wrist other than that keep it simple stupid so we've talked about the color we've talked about the wrist all the other elements are purely just subjective. Uh, things such as the placket, okay? I like clean, streamlined design, so I like to use very plain plackets. Some like to use a French placket, which sort of has, uh, 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 which is, which is uh, essentially a seam on top of this. Uh, I like a clean placket, and it shows off the hand stitching, of course, for our Askoki shirt, shirts, it shows off the hand stitching on the placket itself. All other things are subjective. Uh, in the introductory session, I talked about how the shirt should fit. Uh, it should be roomy enough in the torso uh, to allow you to move properly without being restricted. The length of the shirt is highly subjective, of course, because it's tucked into your trousers, or it should be tucked into your trousers. And so the length should be just long enough that it doesn't pop out of your trousers when you sit down. Uh, it could be as long as you wish it to be. I like my shirts very long, just to have that insurance length, such that when you move around, the shirt doesn't fly out of your trousers. So that's about it for design and structure. One more thing which I mentioned in the introductory series would be the armhole. The armhole should be high, should be sufficiently high, such that uh, when you wear a fitted jacket with a high armhole, it doesn't pull the sleeve up. You can see my sleeves. I turn to the side. To the other side, you can see my sleeves, my cuffs, peeking out by just about, I like to have it about just a quarter of an inch. Some like to go for more, half an inch. But I like to go for just a quarter of an inch. So it should be just picking out from your coat lapel. Now, to accomplish that, if you, especially if you're like me and you wear coats with a high armhole, you want to ensure that the armhole of the shirt is also high, such that when you put your shirt on, the jacket doesn't drag the shirt up and pull off this, essentially have this disappear entirely under the sleeve. So that's it, we're gonna keep it simple. That's uh, about shirt design and structure. Now let's talk about colors. Of course, with colors, you have solids, you have, you know, patterns uh, in terms of, well, the shirt, the, the visual uh, presentation of the shirt, you can have solids, patterns, stripes, and so on and so forth. So let's start with solids, and then we talk about patterns and stripes. Well, needless to say, uh, solids should be sort of the foundation of your wardrobe, your whites and your blues primarily. I'm a big advocate for whites and blues because they go with literally everything. And when I say blue, I don't mean royal blue 
or uh, violet uh, or turquoise. I mean sort of your simple sky blue. Just your white shirts and your simple, simple uh, sky blues. Uh, if, you were to, if you were building a capsule wardrobe, I would focus on those two exclusively. If you had a budget for just 10 shirts, I would make them all solid. Whites and blues, particularly if you're a suit-wearing man, or well, let's say an office suit-wearing man. So that's your whites and your blues. Now, once you get past your whites and your blues, you want to introduce a little bit of complexity to your dressing. Uh, the mark of a sophisticated dresser, of course, is being able to combine patterns and just sort of make the outfit visually more interesting. Um, so this is where stripes come in. So the third, besides your solid whites and your solid blue, should be white and blue stripes. And they come in a variety of stripes. You have block stripes, which are wider stripes. You have pencil stripes. You have bengal stripes. You have hair stripes, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can choose if you were to say, if you had five white shirts, five blue shirts in different shades of sky blue, uh, you could say five striped shirts. And they would run the gamut between sort of your pencil stripes, your uh, hairline stripes, your bengal stripes, and your block stripes, which are sort of more casual in nature. So those are your stripes. Again, I would stick to white and blue stripes in different shades of blue and different stripe, different width of stripes. So if you have those 15 shirts as a starter, you're good to go. You're really set to go. There's practically no outfit you cannot match or pair those with. And then you could get a bit more let's say for the next level of sophistication, you know, you have your pinks. Um, pink is a very great color, especially if you have a darker tone, if you have a darker skin tone, uh, darker melanin such as I too. You know, pink can be a very flattering color, a very light pink again. I'm not talking sort of a highly saturated pink. We're talking for a very low saturated, very light saturated pink. You could wear them sort of in a solid pattern, uh, you could wear them in bengal stripes, uh, you could even wear them in block stripes, so long as the, pit, the pink has, uh, is, has a low saturation, nothing too loud, not a strong pink, just a very nice soft pink. Uh, and then you can go into other multiple stripes, you know, this really, you're going really pushing out the boat here, red and green, I've seen sort of very, I've seen it done very tastefully. Um, it just has to be done very, very tastefully. But as a beginner, I don't believe you have to worry about that. Just worry about your whites, your blues, your, your uh, white and blue stripes, and then perhaps pink, light pink, if you want to push out the boat a little bit. So I'll pause there uh, as far as sort of the shirts, the colors that, that I recommend. I think if you can capture those four, um, you have 20 shirts out of those four combinations. I think you're set to go. Now, what to wear them with? Matching shirts with different outfits. If you're, again, an office suit wearing person, you know, you're wearing your navies and your grays, your navy suits, your gray suits, and different permutations of those, uh, pinstripes, uh, window panes, plaids, and so on and so forth. Uh, you will not go wrong with your, st your standard whites and blues and maybe stripes. Now, this is really where it gets quite tricky. I have a rule of thumb. If you're wearing a pattern jacket such as I do, you want to generally keep everything else very simple. Similar to suits, if you're wearing a pattern suit, you want to keep everything else simple. The shirt should be plain. Now, for the more sophisticated dresses, you could actually wear a pattern shirt. However, you have to take care to ensure that the patterns do not clash. And so if you're wearing a pinstripe suit with very thin pinstripes, you don't want to wear thin banger stripe shirts because there's a clash there. If you're wearing, say, uh, a check suit or sort of a window pane suit, uh, you don't want to wear sort of a, a big tattersall uh, uh, pattern shirt, which is sort of like a check uh, uh, on the shirt. So again, it's all about balance. If you're wearing a pattern suit, you want to keep the shirt fairly simple. 
However, if you're more sophisticated and you want to, say, explore your imagination, you have to ensure that you keep your eye on the skills. Again, the key word there is the skills. You want to ensure that the scale on the jacket and the scale on the shirt are completely different. If you're wearing large scales on your jacket, you want to keep the scales on the shirt fairly small and vice versa. If you're wearing sort of a, a, you know, small scales on your jacket or your suit, you want to ensure that the scale on the shirt is either none at all, which is the safest way to go, or broader scale in the shirt just to ensure and to maintain that balance. So that's it for matching. In terms of casual or formal, of course, we've looked at formal shirts, which is your typical dress shirt, pinpoint or sort of your, point, you know, pin, uh, your uh, button, your pinpoint collar. Uh, that is your standard dress shirt in terms of just design. Uh, the casual shirts, there's a lot more latitude there. I'm wearing what might, what might be considered a casual shirt, which is essentially a button down shirt. Okay. And then casual shirts again run the gamut. You have your cam collar shirts, you have your popover shirts, and so on and so forth. Uh, we discussed that in the prior segment, so you can refer uh, to that video. When to wear shirts without ties? Well, I'm wearing a shirt, uh, as you can see, without a tie. Now, I have a rule of thumb. I have sort of what I would call a standing order. Uh, a gentleman meaning myself, I never like to be seen without anything around my neck. And so if I'm not wearing a, a necktie, a proper necktie, which means a necktie or a bow tie, I like to wear a scarf, an ascot, just to give it a bit more of an oomph, some kind of just, it just lends it a little bit more panache. Um, an open neck sometimes, except you're really wearing a very casual outfit, like going to the beach and you have a, a camp collar shirt. But if you're wearing something as I do, like I do, uh, um, a button-down shirt, uh, a little scarf or an ascot, a handkerchief around the neck, just sort of lends it a bit more, it lifts the outfit uh, from ordinary to sophisticated. So when to wear a shirt with and without a tie, with, with, with a tie, uh, with, uh, with a tie, of course, with suits, you, want, you always want to wear a tie. Uh, you should not, I've seen a lot of men do this, wear a complete suit without a tie. Uh, it might seem trendy, I've even seen a lot of high placed politicians do it, but it just looks terrible. It just looks terrible, it looks like you forgot your tie at home, or you saw it at lunch. Don't do it, I wouldn't recommend it. If you don't want to wear a tie, then wear a sport jacket and a pair of slacks. Again. Do not wear your suits without a tie, or do not remove your tie when wearing a suit. It seems trendy, I see a lot of you know, people doing it, but it's just plain wrong, it looks really bad. Uh, if you insist on not wearing a tie, or if it's very hot or warm outside and you want to forego a tie, then wear a sport jacket, as I, as I have on, and a pair of odd trousers. As far as the occasion, when to wear a tie and when not, that's entirely up to you. Of course, you know, occasions, different occasions call for different dress codes. If it's formal, if it's business, of course, you want to look smart in a tie. If it's a bit more dressed down, you're going out in the evening, a lovely evening out to a lounge, to a cigar lounge or to an evening gathering uh, or to a summer ga garden party, of course, you're free uh, to wear your shirt tieless. But again, like I said, Wearing an ascot or some kind of a scarf, a scarf under your shirt just lifts the outfit from uh, average or ordinary to sophisticated. That's about it for shirts and ties uh, with or how to wear your shirts with or without ties. Now let's talk about shirt care. I get this question all the time uh, on Instagram and elsewhere, should I launder my shirts? And for me, the answer is no. Now, there are those of you who claim to be very busy and they just dump their shirts at the dry cleaner. That's fine if you prefer. But I think to get the most out of your shirt, to get the most out of the life of your shirt, essentially throw them in a washer and have them steam pressed. It preserves the life of the fabric. I don't dry clean anything except when pressed. For instance, when there's a stain that can be otherwise removed. But for your shirt, you have what you call a stain remover. If you have to spot clean the shirt, you can buy a stain remover from the store. 
uh, from any department store, spray it slightly on the stove and just rub it off or let it soak for a while. However, the proper way to clean your shirts, in my opinion, is just to put them in the laundry, not with anything else, just put your shirts alone without any other items to ensure that the colors don't run into your shirt. Dry clean your shirts or sort of launder your shirts with other shirts, specifically colors that do not bleed. And hopefully the, the, the fabric you've used for the shirt is a high quality fabric and it doesn't bleed. But you just put it in the laundry in a very, very lukewarm water wash, bring it out while damp. Or you hang it, when you bring it out, you hang it and Either you steam press, either you press it while slightly damp, or you let it dry and then use a steam iron and press it. And that's about it. I've done that for years and I've gotten 10, 15 years out of shirts that I've essentially cleaned this way. So it's very simple. Do not dry clean your shirts if you can afford it. If you're pressed for time, that's one thing. But if you can, or if you have a housekeeper or a valet, uh, just have them throw your shirts in the laundry or in a, in, a, in a washer, and then steam press them when they are done. So that's about it for shirt care. Now, uh, several of you are at different points in your wardrobe building journey. Uh, if you're just starting out, then this particular segment uh, applies to you in terms of how to structure the build out. If you already have a broad shirt wardrobe, then it's all about filling out gaps. Uh, pushing out the boat as it were, you know, perhaps looking for more interesting pattern combinations, color combinations, and so on and so forth. And uh, that's for another session, that's for another video. But this particular tutorial is aimed at those who are looking to start the process of building out their shirt wardrobe. Now, of course, at Askoki, we make our own shirts. I'm wearing an Askoki shirt. Uh, our shirts, again, completely handmade entirely handmade except for the seams, just like every, you know, the straight seams are stitched by a machine, but everything else is completely hand done, just like any hand tailored shirt out there, wherever you go. Our shirts, of course, are bespoke, made specifically to your own specific measurements. We create a pattern for you and we make it exclusively for you. And that pattern is stored on your account such that you can come back and make those shirts or any or pick a new fabric and have us make you new shirts. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of this presentation. I should not uh, leave without reminding you to click on the like button on this particular video, follow us or subscribe to this, inst uh, to this uh, YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram. The address there is Askoki IG. Ask Oki IG, that's A-S-K-O-K-E-Y IG. Uh, follow us on Instagram, uh, comment. I love to receive your comments. I love to engage the audience. I answer every question, every DM, and so on and so forth. We also have a Discord community uh, of like-minded individuals where you can interact and intercourse with other people without prof in the way, obstructing the flow of the conversation. So, Check out our Discord community as well, and uh, you would be glad to be part of this community by clicking on the button below, on the Discord button below, and joining uh, this community. Last and certainly not the least, I would welcome you to visit our website at www.askoki.com. Go to the shop section, click on the shop, uh, shop section, and you will see an array of products, including shirts, which we've talked about today. Um, all these products, of course, are made to the highest quality, all custom made or bespoke to be more specific. Uh, you can go through them, uh, look at our video tutorials on fit, taking your measurements and so on and so forth. Uh, you have our genie tool, our wardrobe tool, and uh, certainly you have a library of content on there, all our video archives and blog entries uh, where you can uh, essentially satisfy yourself with uh, highly educational uh, and informative content. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I bring this second installment on shirts to an end. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to having you on our next episode at Askoki. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.